Welcome to calculating titrations. In the previous video, we used a base, sodium hydroxide, of a known concentration, so 0.1 molar, to neutralize 5 milliliters of an unknown concentration of hydrochloric acid. Now we're going to look at how to use this information to calculate the concentration of the hydrochloric acid. So we're going to use our data from the previous video. In that titration, we had 0.1 molar NaOH, like we said. The burette originally read 0 milliliters and went down to 25 milliliters. So that means I used 25 milliliters of NaOH to do the titration, to neutralize the HCl. So this is the information we know about our base. And for our acid, we don't know the concentration, so unknown molarity HCl. But I do know I only added 5 milliliters of it to the beaker in the titration. So I have a molarity up here, a concentration. I have a volume here. And I have the volume I used for the acid. So how am I going to use this data? Well, it's a very simple equation to remember. MAVA equals MB VB. So this equation has four variables. The left side of the equation has MA times VA. That's the molarity of the acid, the concentration of the acid, times the volume of the acid. The right side of the equation has MB and VB. That's the molarity of the base and the volume of the base. And now I simply plug in the information I have into this equation. So I'm going to set up my variables and identify them. The molarity of the acid in this case, well the acid is HCl, so I don't know that. The volume of the acid used is this 5 milliliters over here. That's 5 milliliters. The molarity of the base is the 0.1. That was my known concentration. And the volume of the base that I used in the titration was 25 milliliters. So now that I have my variables identified, I can go ahead and plug things into this equation. I'm going to have MA, still unknown, times the 5 milliliters of acid equals the 0.1 molar base times the 25 milliliters of base that was used to neutralize. I can now solve for MA by dividing both sides by 5 milliliters. So that's going to give me 0.1 times 25 divided by 5. And when we carry out that arithmetic, we'll see that this equals 0.5. And I'm solving for molarity, so this is 0.5 molar. And that's a concentration of the acid. So this data that we use in the titration essentially let us figure out that the concentration of the acid, HCl, was 0.5 molar. Let's take a look at another example to see how to use this equation. So in this example, 40 milliliters of sulfuric acid is completely neutralized by 10 milliliters of 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide. What's the concentration of sulfuric acid? So we have a neutralization reaction occurring, there's given volume, some unknown concentrations. This is pretty clearly a titration problem. So we're going to use MA times VA equals MB times VB. And just like we always do when we have an equation, we set up our variables first. So MA and VA, let's identify the acid first. Well, the acid is H2SO4, sulfuric acid, so we don't know the molarity. We do know that the volume of the acid is 40 milliliters. So now we should find MB and VB. Well, the base is sodium hydroxide, and its molarity is 0.5. And the volume of the base is 10 milliliters, because that's how much was used. Now, before I set up this equation, there's something really, really important about this. The acid in this case has two hydrogens in it. This is called a diprotic acid. Diprotic because it has two protons in it, or two H pluses. And we have to account for that somehow because one molecule of sulfuric acid is going to release more hydrogens than one molecule of, say, HCl, for example. And HCl would be considered monoprotic. And those H pluses that are released are what's actually being neutralized by the NaOH. So the fact that there's two of them in the sulfuric acid is going to play a role in how we approach this problem. So let's start plugging in some of our variables in this equation. Uh, we'll see that Ma is still unknown times VA, which is 40 milliliters, equals MB, which is 0.5 molar, and VB, which is 10 milliliters. Now to account for this diprotic acid, this H2SO4, the fact that there are two H's, all I do, because it's the acid that has two H's, I'm going to multiply the acid side by 2. 
And this is how we deal with anything that has more than one H in it. So acids that have multiple hydrogens in them are called polyprotic. Polyprotic means many protons or many H plus ions present. So H2SO4 is clearly diprotic. Carbonic acid, H2CO3, is also polyprotic and, or diprotic, it has two. And phosphoric acid, H3PO4, is another example of a polyprotic acid. If I had H3PO4, I would have to multiply by three instead of two because there are three hydrogens present. So now that we know how to account for polyprotic acids like H2SO4, we just multiply the acid side by the number of H's, we can now go ahead and solve for Ma. So Ma, the molarity of the acid, is going to be equal to 0.5 times 10 over 2 times 40. We simply divided the 2 and the 40 from the left side of the equation to get the Ma by itself. And evaluating this expression is going to give us about 0 0.06 molar as a concentration of my acid. One last note here. If I instead had a base with multiple OHs, so instead of NaOH, say I had calcium hydroxide that has two OHs, I'm going to treat it the same way, except instead of multiplying the acid side by the number of H's, I would multiply the base side, so the MBVB, by two. And this two would account for the two hydroxides in the calcium hydroxide. So when you're dealing with titration problems like this, it's important to keep an eye out for acids that have multiple H's and bases that have multiple OH's. And just remember to multiply their side of the equation by how many H's or how many OH's there are. That wraps up our lesson on calculating titrations. Write down any questions you have in your notes and bring them with you to class.